Hi everybody, I'm Jim Richardson. I'm a photographer for National Geographic and Traveler magazines and today I'd like to share five tips for travel and destination photography. All right, tip number one. It's about the location, it's not about you. People come to travel photography because they really like the place. <laughs> they may like how you see the place, but first off, they like the place. Now, I've often said, if you want to be a better photographer, stand in front of more interesting stuff. So do your research, explore the location, figure out what's interesting. Many photographers get wrapped up in the idea that when their pictures are published on the page, there's gonna be an album, it's like a gallery to show off their great pictures. If you think of the finished story as your project, if you think about how that's going to all go together with the headlines and the story and the captions and all of it to make a complete package for the viewer, probably you're going to be happier and make better pictures that really relate to people. All right, tip number two, you need a range of skills. You don't get to be just a landscape photographer or a portrait photographer or a food photographer when you're doing travel photography and destination photography. You need to be able to tell the whole story. You need to show what the place looks like, introduce people to the characters, capture the vibe, include some action. You really need to be able to do all those kinds of photography in order to tell the whole story. So brush up on your skills, take a look at what you're good at, and then work on what you're not so good at. <laughs> if you don't do portraits very well, go do some work on portraits. Tip number three. Aim for range in your pictures. Range in terms of color, in terms of emotion, in terms of scale. I'm always trying to look for ways that I can do pictures that have a really different color palette so that when the page turns, the reader experiences something new and fresh. So I'd like to have some pictures in the mix that are all red, are all blue, are all green, that really have a dominant color palette. I want pictures that have a range of emotions, from quiet to really dynamic, with real action, with intense emotions in some places, with serene emotions in other places. I wanna think about scale. Yeah, I want some really tight shots of great looking faces, of course. But if I want a picture to run on a two-page spread, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I've got some important detail in the picture that's small. So that the page designer says, ha, ah, great picture, but it needs to run big. So I want all of those things in those uh, pictures so that as the reader turns the pages or experiences the pictures one after another, it's a fresh experience, it doesn't get stale. Tip number four, think ahead about the needs of the designer of your publication or your publishing effort. So if you're shooting for a magazine and you want to have a hope of your picture being on the cover, you'd better be shooting some verticals and leave space for the logo. If you're shooting and you think you want to have your picture be the lead picture of a story, you'd better be leaving some space on the right or on the left for type, for the headlines. Think about what the designer is going to need when they start putting that together. It could be you, you might be the designer, but you want to be thinking about those kinds of pictures when you're out in the field. Likewise, if you want big double page pictures on two, uh, two page spreads, you better not put your main subject in the gutter. In other words, right in the middle of the picture. Better be thinking about all of those things when you're out shooting. If you can, 
give yourself several options. If you have a main subject, try it with space on the left and then try another frame with space on the right and then do a vertical with no space and then a vertical with space for the logo. Do all of those shots as you're anticipating how the picture is going to be used. And of course, if you're shooting for Instagram stories, well, you're gonna shoot 16 to nine verticals, aren't you? If you're shooting for a keynote presentation that's going to be in a 16 to nine horizontal format, you'd better be shooting some kind of extra, extra wide pictures or pictures that can crop that way and work well. So think about that when you're out in the field, think about it all the time Whenever you're in those situations, what's going to work in the final use of the picture? Tip number five, go back. Go back to the exact same location. Go back when the weather is different. Go back when the light is different. Go back at a different time of day. Go back because, well, you can't figure out what might happen different that would make a better picture. The idea of going back is not to take more good pictures. The idea of going back is to take one superlative picture. Nobody's gonna slap you on the back for having a high percentage of keepers in your shoot. What they're gonna love you for is producing that one over the top picture where you set the bar high and it really, really worked go back. It's one of the strongest tools I think I have. Go back. No ego, no feeling that I got it the first time. Nope. Go back. Go back and try and do it better. And I often do. So try that, keep at it, and set the bar high. I'm Jim Richardson, and those are my five tips for travel and destination photography. Thanks to B&H for letting me share them with you. You can always find me at jimrichardsonphotography.com or on Instagram at jimrichardsonng. I hope I'll see you there. If you have thoughts or comments, please leave them in the comments. I'll try and answer everything I can. Bye.